I reckon the removable flex plate on my Mark III is my favorite feature. So how does an aftermarket build tax system compare? You might remember in a previous video I fitted and tested this AnyCubic Ultra Base. And really that was a stopgap because I was planning to fit one of these all along. But then I saw this one for only $40 and I thought, why not give it a try? It's safe to say I'm definitely not satisfied with this system. For years and years I printed onto a sheet of glass and hairspray on my Solid Doodle 2 with ABS and it worked pretty well. This system I would say is pretty similar. Now my first video I did on it was pretty rushed, but since then I've had enough time to tweak it and get it working how it's meant to be. So the problems I had in the previous video are for a number of reasons. Firstly, the adhesive on this wasn't strong enough to pull it down completely and there were little gaps in the corner. So what I ended up doing was putting on mini versions of these Bulldog clips and that seemed to do the trick. Although I had leveled it, I hadn't leveled it watching the first layer print. So the Mark III has something it calls Live Z and you can twist the dial when it's on the first layer and it will move it up and down all through software. On a regular printer like this, without any smart system where you have to use the thumb screws, well, you can do that yourself, but you've got to manually tune each one. So if one side looks like it's not squished enough, you can twist it and move it a little bit closer. And conversely, if another side looks like it's squishing in too much, you can twist it and move it a little bit further away. So once you've got that dialed in, it pretty much shouldn't change and you should be able to get good prints after that. So now that I have it sorted, what do I think of it? Well, I don't think it's really advanced enough from my old glass and hairspray system to keep on the printer. And what they say about this is that you don't need adhesives like glass and hairspray because the microscopic surface will do the job for you. But I would say it's pretty much on par with the performance of glass or glue stick. Unlike those, however, you're not meant to physically attack it if you need to clean it up with a scraper or anything like that. Now I'm still using ABS on this because I want to give it a hard time. Obviously PLA is going to be easier because it won't warp and it won't lift up in the corners and work itself loose. Yes, ABS is going to do that, but what's the point in giving this thing an easy test when I'm trying to work out just how well it works? I've got this to the point where small, simple objects will stick pretty well. And then at the end, as it cools down, as advertised, I can give it a little nudge, it comes off and the little skirt around the outside will peel off as well. So you think all good, well, wrong. As soon as I introduce anything tricky, where there's a tiny little bit of warping, something like a part with multiple feet, it still comes loose and it's still disappointing. Now anyone that's printed a little bit will say, well, Michael, it's an open frame machine and you're printing with ABS, of course it's gonna warp. And I would say to that, that any Cubic Mega i3 that this comes from is also an open frame machine. In fact, it's very similar to this model. So since it comes with a heated bed, I think it's an expectation that you should be able to print ABS and other filaments like that with it. And therefore it's fair to criticize it. One final note, I have started testing this with flexible filaments like TPU and with the bed not turned on in terms of its heating, that stuff, sticks pretty nicely, yet you can still get it off afterwards. So it's a tick in terms of that. So onto this product, it's worth 84 US dollars and I actually got a second flexible plate and that was 19 US dollars. A little bit of money to Australia for shipping. I got this one from Matter Hackers simply because I went to the BuildTech website and they were saying that it had a long lead time and then it tried to charge me about $70 Australian shipping. So I found it on Matter Hackers, ordered it, it came in about a week and a half and it didn't cost anything unreasonable for shipping. Let's have a look what comes in the box. We have a sticker. We have our BuildTech instructions just for the sheet. We have our instructions for the flex plate system. And then the main component of that is the base. Once again, it has an adhesive bottom and you can see a range of magnets around that. And that is of course to work with the flex plate system. So we've got this spring steel here. It's got a warning sticker on the back that we need to peel off. Like I said, I've got two of those. And then we've got our sheet of build tack to stick on it after it's installed. How does it compare to the one from the Mark III? Well, it is smaller, but that's because I ordered the size to suit this i3. You can get bigger sizes to suit different printers, but the price goes up accordingly. Now this comes with a PEI sticker sheet on it, and I have to say they did a good job of deburring the edges. It's also pretty flexible, makes that satisfying sound. This one feels a little bit stiffer and the edges feel a little bit sharper. They're not razor sharp, but I think if you weren't careful, you could get a nasty slice along the edge. One advantage of this system is although it comes with 
a build tack sheet. There's nothing to stop you from putting on PEI sheet or whatever else you wanted to put on. And the reason I've got two is because I wanna be able to experiment with that. So I might even leave one bare and see if the TPU sticks to that for when I'm doing my flexibles. And then I can simply remove it and put on the other one with the build tack or whatever other type of sheet I want and print with that. Before we can print anything, we need to hit up the printer and get off this old system. Still loving that firmware. While I wait for that, I actually have a deburring tool. I'm gonna to use that to clean up the edge. This is taking so long to heat up. I print at 100 degrees with ABS and that's one of the reasons I don't like it. The glass is so big and heavy, it's just killed the performance of the bed heater to the point where it heats up so slow that the thermal runaway projection kicked in on the firmware because it thought nothing was connected. Hopefully, this being much thinner, it heats up much faster like it came in the first place. Now switch to a twin scraper system. Typically, it wouldn't stick down when I wanted it to, and now that I'm trying to remove it, it was hard to get off. The job is done, a little bit of cleaning to do on the platform. Just testing the top surface with a straight edge, and it's definitely crowned across the top. So that's a pretty good cause to think about fitting an automatic leveling system with mesh compensation. Okay, time to fit this one. I've used alcohol to wipe down the top and you'll notice it's got the cutouts here. So previously I needed to drill out with a countersink bit to move the screws down lower so they didn't hit the bottom of the glass. But on this one, no such dramas. So let's peel this off and get it into place. <laughs> Secret weapon. Okay, first impressions are this seems quite small. I did order the i3 203 by 203 millimeter model, but it does sit in a fair way from the edge. Now, the Mark III has a much bigger print bed than this, so anything really big I'm gonna print on that, but just something to keep in mind, you might lose just a few millimeters either side of your print volume. Let's see how it fits. Okay, that is quite strong. Like the Mark III one, it's got one hell of a grab. People really worry about things coming loose and wobbling, but with either system, I just don't think that's gonna happen. This is really stuck on. You've got to pry quite hard to get it off. One thing that's nice about the Mark III is it has two screws up the back that help locate it. So you can slide it on until they touch and then simply drop it down and you know it's perfectly in place. This one doesn't quite have that. It's gonna to need to be a little bit more careful to make sure everything is aligned. I can see a little screw hole in the back of the bed, so maybe I'll make something that bolts through that and provides a barrier to slide this against and then drop down into place. I suppose the next step is cleaning this top surface and putting on the sheet of build tack. Trying to get it perfectly aligned on one side because if you're off one millimeter here, by the time it's twisted over a length of 200 millimeters, it's gonna hang way off out of place. So trying to get it perfect at the start definitely pays off. My other secret weapon for jobs like this is an old credit card or any type of plastic card that acts like a perfect squeegee and unlike metal, it won't damage the surface. So highly recommend it. There it is fitted. I think I'm only half a millimeter at most off in the corner. So seemed very flat and I'm very happy with that job. Let's do our first test print. Now I am about to level it and the glass plate that came off it is definitely thicker than the new system. So you might think I need to move it down that exact amount, but that's not quite true. Build tech doesn't need to be squished in like glass or glass and hairspray does. So I'm gonna be cautious with how much I wind it in and creep up step by step until I've got a perfect first layer. I reckon that's a pretty good first attempt. I'm gonna start a print and adjust it live. It's still slower than stock to heat up to 100 degrees, but it's definitely a good five to 10 minutes faster reaching 100 than any cubic ultra base. Layer one looks like it's very close to ideal. It's smished just a little bit, but not too much. If you smish it in too much, as the instructions say, on build tack, it can be impossible to remove, which means ripping off your sheet and putting on a new one. Let's let this print and then see how easy it is to get off.
Well, it's finished printing and it didn't come loose. It's on there pretty well. So now we arrive at the moment of truth. Let's switch this off, put our finger under the edge to remove the magnetic plate and see if this is gonna work. Not bad. Now that was very slightly harder to get off than I would have liked, but looking at the surface here, there's a few marks where I can see it was just a little bit close to the extruder, so it smished in a little bit too much, but it's a promising start. What I might do is load up the exact print that failed over and over on the previous build surface. We'll get that one printed and we'll see how well it comes off. So second test print successfully complete. Let's get it off. This time the platform's still quite warm. So we'll test its performance in that scenario. I think this one's gonna need the tiniest pry still. All right, off it comes. Everything is free and moves. Not too bad a print, a little bit of stringing, could do with a little bit of refinement, but success number two. So I would say, judging by this, that it's still a little bit too close, so I'm gonna lift it up even more. And then both of these are being quite short, stubby objects, so they're never gonna flex off as nicely as something wide. So we'll try that next, perhaps in PLA. So I lied when I said it was gonna be PLA. Instead, I quickly modeled up the part that I spoke about, which is gonna clip onto the back of the bed to help me quickly align the back of the magnetic part. So let's see if it's gonna come off any easier this time. That's pretty good. I don't think it's quite as good as the Mark III, but I think that's because it's build tech instead of PEI. So I think that's where the difference is coming in the properties. Our brim is also coming off nicely. So I'd say I'm pretty close to having the correct height. All right. Lock nut is in place. Let's clip this one on from the rear. I think that's a line. M3 by 16 millimeter bolt. That is a beautiful fit. And now, of course, when we put on our sheet, we can simply push it to the back and drop it down and it's perfectly aligned. Big success. Let's do one more print, this time in PLA, just to see how easily it comes off. Here we have it, the final test print. We have a blue articulated dinosaur. So let's see how it comes off with PLA. You can see it flexing already, which indicates it's gonna be a good print. Just the head. And voila, I'd say that's a pretty good result. Not the best print. I'm still fine tuning my settings for PLA on this particular machine. Been doing exclusively ABS, but I think I'm pretty happy with this product. So time to sum it up. So the question I asked at the start was, is it as good as the Mark III one? And I'd say in this current configuration, not quite. It might be just a difference between this one having build tech and this one having PEI. This build tech sheet is definitely a little bit stickier. So even after it cools down and you're flexing, it doesn't come off as easy as the PEI sheet on the Mark III. The other issue is that this one is a little bit stiffer, so it's easier to flex the Mark III one to a larger extent to help release the part, but really that's splitting hairs. I'm not particularly worried about flexing either of them excessively because it is spring steel, so it should go back to its original position and the magnets will also help to hold it down and flat. So really all that's left is to say, would I recommend this product? And I would say definitely. A little bit of fine tuning here, but a lot less than the Anycubic Ultra Base. As I said in the intro, the best thing about the Mark III is the bed. It just makes it so easy to print. I think by the end I got to the point where I didn't need the spatula and I've never needed it once on the Mark III. So if I can keep tweaking just that little bit more and get this printer to work in the same way, as far as I'm concerned, that's a really big win. 
My next steps are to order a sheet of PEA and to put it on the second one. I'll also try doing some flexibles onto the bare sheet and see how that goes. Hopefully it sticks, but not too much, and I'll be good to go from there. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.